Good morning, good morning, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good day, good morrow, wherever you may be. It is me, it is I, the infamous Kiki. Good morning, welcome to my channel. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. I was on the interwebs yes, last night, just getting ready to go to bed, you know, getting ready to call it a night. And then, Lord have mercy, what did I see? A, 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 a video, a news article. I'm like, who? A romance scammer, who? Child, they talking about uh, Mocha Blast, a.k.a. Lydell Birch is his real name. He is a rapper from, uh, well, he, he's lived all over, but supposedly uh, he lives in the Las Vegas area. He was, if you watch the show, Love After Lockup, Love During Lockup, whichever iteration, there are there are there's a couple by the name of Justine and Michael. Michael was in prison. He was a rapper before he went to prison. He's he also got snatched up by the feds. He went to prison for quite a while for selling um, illegal substances. He got with a lady by the name of Justine, and they have been on the show for the past like two seasons. Okay, so they Michael was in a rap game, like I said, and he had a producer by the name of Mocha, producer slash friend by the name of Mocha. So Mocha was on the show, not this season, but last season. And he was talking to Michael about his career. And that's one of the reasons why they moved to Las Vegas. Because that's where Mocha was. And he was supposed to get their career started. And we didn't see Mocha on there last season, but we saw him on the season before. And him and Michael were friends. And he was on there quite extensively. And so then after the show had already wrapped last year, um, Mocha was doing the interview a live on a content creator on YouTube that he was doing a live interview talking he was talking about his rap career talking about the reality show just talk just talking with this dude all suddenly live on 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 the camera there's this dude that comes into Mocha's home and you can see like the reflection in the TV and then all of a sudden Mocha gets up stands up and there's some words exchanged and he ends up shooting the guy well to make a long story short Mocha apparently this man apparently barged into his home and he shot this man in self-defense okay the police has since deemed it was self-defense because the man did break into the home he shot the dude and it turns out it's it's a domestic issue okay like like we were like what and we're like i saw the video online and it was crazy like you the, the name of the content creator is is, is lord lucan l-a-w l-a-w-d l-u-c-a-n so like lord lucan um and he was actually on geo geo malik's um after the incident happened lord lucan was actually on geo malik's uh uh youtube channel talking about what happened in the interview and so after things started to come out saying that apparently the woman that mocha was living with she apparently had an ex-husband or a baby daddy or an ex that she was going back and forth that she was on again, off again with. So apparently this ex did not like Mocha Blast and they had had words and had issues before. And so the dude, I guess it, 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 it was, it popped off and the dude came to the house, barged into the house. Well, actually barged into the house it, it, to fight or to harm, or to end the life of Mocha, we don't really know, but he bars into the home, broke into the home, yelling, and I think he may have been armed, and so Mocha shot, apparently, in self-defense, now, when this came out, people were like, oh, well, self-defense, and, and my question was, in the comment section on Gio's channel, in the comment section for According to Amber, and even in my own videos that I made about Love After Lockup, I questioned I didn't question the story. I knew, you know, it was on video. He did defend himself. But I'm like, if he's a big time producer, why is he in a domestic ish issue? I'm not saying that, that just because you have money or you're famous, you can't be caught up in the domestic issues. We know plenty of famous people out there worldwide that have been caught up in domestic issues. So I'm not saying that. But I said, I thought it was pretty strange to me that he's dating some chick that's a school teacher. I saw a picture of the lady. I ain't trying to drag her, but I'm just like, Okay, he living with her, and what now? Like he's going back and forth with his chick. I said, I said, some, I said, some of this don't sound. I said, this don't sound right, y'all. Like I said it over and over again. 
And I said, I know y'all want to say it's self-defense, and it probably was, and the police says it was. But I'm like, something about, about Mocha in this situation, he's a big-time rapper and producer, and he's going back and forth, and he living with the chick. Why, why don't he have his own place to stay? Why is he living like... None of the things, you know, from what I heard, again, these, these are my opinions and rumors. Please do not take this as fact. Allegedly, is that this chick was going bouncing back between Mocha and her baby daddy. And apparently the baby daddy did not like Mocha, did not like him being around the kids and living there for whatever reason. Um, and maybe he suspected something was up with Mocha. Maybe he just didn't like him. Maybe he was jealous. It could have been all of those of the above. And so that's what I heard. That she was bouncing back and forth between Mocha. And also that Mocha kind of, you know, got into her graces because he pretty much needed a place to stay. That's what I've heard too. Again, these are just rumors. It's not facts. So he ends up shooting this dude. And okay, so fast forward to, to the other day. So I'm on the news. I'm looking around. People talking about... Somebody on not somebody on Love After Lockup is a romance scammer. And I'm like, well, I, I don't blame. But then they put up Mocha's picture. And I said, what? So it turns out that when the shooting happened last year, it was all over the news because, you know, he was on a reality show. So so a bunch of people, you know, it made like news. It was in the blogs, whatever, whatever, whatever. And 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 um, you know, they they played the 911 tapes, all of that. Apparently. There were, you know, people watching it. There were some women watching these videos and watching what's happening. And one lady was like, you know, saying that his girlfriend called 911 because they had a domestic dispute or whatever. Da, 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 da. And one lady was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, uh, that's my man. So apparently this lady called the police and was like, uh, that's that's my boyfriend. But he living with a girl. And ended up shooting her ex in a domestic issue. Then other women started to call and be like, no, that's not that, that's not your man. That's my man. That's not your man. That's my man. So apparently Mocha had women everywhere. So they done a news story and I, and I put links to the news story because this man, real name Lydell Birch, if you know Lydell Birch, a, a, a.k.a. Mocha Blast, uh, a.k.a. African Prince. I didn't see so many different, uh, a.k.a. Ladies Love Mocha. You might be a victim of this man as well. Apparently, this this what was happening was this man was talking to women all over the country and possibly all over the world. These women have been brave enough to come forward on this news uh, story. They're brave, and they they've been talking to him. And this dude is like he's not even that old. He he's a he's a young dude. You know he ain't. I think he's like. 27 28 37 like something like that he's not even that old so apparently these women have come forward they've even started a facebook group because this man was apparently romancing these women and borrowing money for various reasons he was saying that he was borrowing money for for business ventures he said he was borrowing money he was going to pay them back one lady he owed twenty seven thousand dollars to one lady he owed six thousand dollars to one lady he owed ten thousand dollars to. So apparently Mocha got holes in different area codes all over the country. Women have been calling in and going to this Facebook group. So far, there's over three thousand people in this Facebook group. Now I'm not saying he scammed three thousand people. I'm just saying there's three thousand people in this group. Because you know, granted, some people probably join this Facebook group just out of curiosity and because they watch the show. I'm gonna join the damn Facebook group. But apparently. There's women who are scared to be on camera that, that, that are embarrassed, that don't want to come forward. But there's probably a whole hundreds of women out there that Mocha was basically getting online, starting online profiles on, on multiple platforms, DMing women, women on social media and sliding in their DMs and and chatting them up. And all these women thought they were exclusive, that he was just with them. And so... He wasn't. He was talking to a bunch of women. So Mocha was saying that that he had he wanted to build a studio and he wanted to start another business and he all kinds of excuses. He needed his electricity paid. He needed his water bill paid. Um, the 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 media, the news uh, channel looked up his information. He had, had like two or three businesses that he started that went under. He had, he had a PPP loan that he got back. When you know during during the pandemic when they was giving out like an eighteen thousand dollar PPP loan, so I've looked at his rapping career. 
he's done interviews in magazines and blogs and on the internet and stuff like that. So he really is a rapper. He has been on tour. He's done he's he's done tours. He has produced uh and wrote songs for rappers, so that is true. He does not have a studio. So the studio that we saw in Love During Lockup or, or that reality show, because you can rent out studios, right? That wasn't his studio. It was a rented studio. You can rent out studio time. And then it turned out that Mocha, you know, it, it, apparently he was finessing these women. And he owed these women money. Also recently it came out that the man who got shot, his mother... His parents are suing Mocha in a civil suit, in a wrongful death civil suit. So Mocha is finna get sued by these women that he scanned, and he's also finna get sued by the man that he shot and ended his life in self-defense. I have to say that. It wasn't self-defense. I'm not gonna lie. Um, but it just seemed like a hot mess. And I said, why if somebody's rich and famous producer would be involved in something so crazy? Now, now, now I was vindicated. I was right, y'all. I'm telling y'all, when I tell you that two plus two does not equal four, it doesn't. And I told y'all about Mocha last year that two plus two, I said, something is off about, about this person. So that's apparently what he do. He, he borrows went, money from these women. He goes and live with these women. And he's projecting an image and a lifestyle that doesn't match what's in his damn bank account. That lady on the video, and, and if you watch the interview, she was saying he don't have no type. He, he only type his credit score. You know, because a bunch of these women, they seem like they were older, maybe older Caucasian women. Some of these, so people are saying, well, damn, he got a type. I said, no, he he know what kind of, wh who who got the money. But but I have questions. Of course, you know, always I have questions, you know. So is, is Mocha another Legion? I had to say that too. Is he another Legion? Because to me, I don't know if Legion was scamming. I don't know if Legion was scamming. On, on the TikTok, who who the who the who the f did I get married? When I went over that, y'all can watch the video where I go over and break down that whole thing. I don't know if Legion was scamming or not, but he was doing. He was laying up with some women. He barely had. He was living in hotels and barely had a place to stay. So Legion was up to something. Now I'm not saying he was scamming like Mocha, but apparently Mocha has been living from woman to woman to woman. Has been has been borrowing money from women, but really, I. I you know, I don't understand. So we're going to talk about a few things. We're going to talk about three things. Number one, in order for somebody to hit you up with, for, for money, they had they would have to have some inkling that you have money. Apparently, all these women that Mocha hit up, some of these women, these women are not dummies. These women are not ghetto women. These women are not, you know, these women look like educated. Some of these women are business women. The, these are educated women. These are these are business women. These so these women are uh, successful women. I don't, I don't know all these women personally, but I've looked up some of their information, and I, I don't want to put their information out there on blast. Like they was brave enough to to do the to to come on TV and do the the news. But I'm sure there's more women. But these women are put together women. These 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 ain't these ain't these these, these ain't no chick from the hood. It's not no scallywags. These, these are educated, seemingly put together women but my question is when you're dating men online how would they know how much money you have how 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 would how would mocha know to ask these women for money because you can't tell me that he targeted just every woman out there he targeted a specific type of woman so my question is number one how did he how did he know how did he know to ask these that these women had this kind of money because i wouldn't know whether a dude had had a kind of money or not not unless I know I'm targeting a type. And then how, how did they become victims of this kind of target? So that's why I'm telling women and men out there. Are you on, are you on your social medias or your, your, your online dating? Are, are you flashing your money? Are you bragging about, I live in this big house and I live in this, I got these nice cars and oh, I do this for a living. There's no, there's nothing wrong with telling somebody your information. I'm sure he came at them like he's some big time rapper and they can look him up and Google him. And he's saying he had studios and businesses and money. And, and they, I, I'm sure these women did, did, you know, did, did, well, maybe they didn't, but I'm just saying that if anything, I'm, you could easily Google, Google Mocha Blast and, and, and pull up his, 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 his rap career and his interviews and stuff like that. So it's not like he was completely lying about who he was. However, I just want to know 
How did he get to the point where, where this man is asking you for money? How did he know that you even had that kind of money or that kind of credit, or that kind of access? So I would caution women, please don't be out here telling men or, or, or your man telling women how much money you make in, in the beginning of your relationships. I know, I know we live in a society in America where people want to floss and people want to flash, even a low key flex. I know people that low key flex. They don't really put it all out there, but they low key flex. Like I get on YouTube and I kind of, I, I kind of under the radar low key flex, but I low key flex because I, I, I don't, I, it's, it's YouTube. I, I'm not trying to date y'all, but when, when it comes to me on, on, on these online dating apps, which I'm on like four of them, three or four of them, I don't be flexing. I don't be telling men how much money I make. People ask what I do. I'm an accountant. I leave it at that. I'm an accountant for a security company. That's all I say. I'm not telling you where I work, what I do for a living, how much money I make, what kind of cars I have, where I live, what kind of house I live in, how big my house is. I'm not trying to tell nobody none of that information. You 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 you, you understand what I'm saying, y'all dig? So y'all y'all don't do that. Don't don't be trying to flex and floss. I understand, but don't do that when when you're on these dating apps and you're talking to these men. Because that, because you you'll put a target on your forehead by telling these men I'm successful, I'm a lawyer, I have a nice house, or, or sometimes you can't even tell motherfuckers what neighborhood you live in, ladies. Because I know y'all live in certain uh, cities where certain neighborhoods means you have money, certain cities mean you have money. So sometimes you got you you got to fudge the details a little bit. It'll be a little vague. It'll be a little vague. And I'm sure Mocha tried to scam a lot of women, and I'm sure there's a bunch of women that peep game real quick and probably like backed off that. But the fact that these are are seemingly normal women that fell for this, that I, I'm, you know, I, 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 the, the question I have to ask, how did, how did Mocha even know you had that kind of money? That's number one. Number two, these women thought they were exclusive. So my thing about exclusivity, when you're thinking you're exclusive with a person, are, are, and, and, this, and Mocha was a high profile person. So my question is, are you on this person's social media? Did he make up excuses as to why they weren't on his social media? So these women thought they were exclusive. And this man has a real high social media profile. Why isn't my pick on your social media? And this is coming from somebody with experience. I tell y'all before, I've said this story before. I dated somebody who is a working rock who, who who was he's not any not right now but during the summertime in particular he is a working rock musician okay like he works a regular job but then he tours with other groups rappers he had his own group pretty well known in dallas um locally and in texas they actually opened a group i can't say the name of the group but there's a, a famous rock group that came to Dallas about eight or nine years ago that they opened for, okay? They've opened for other groups and he's toured worldwide. He's toured, toured countrywide, worldwide. They were so close to making big until they messed it up, but that's a story for another day. But yes, I know I've dated a dude who was a musician. And so um, he has Facebook, he has Instagram, all this. When me and him were dating and we were, we were dating, I was on his social media. It was pictures of me and him hugged up it was pictures of me and him New Year's Eve. It was pictures of me and him together on his social media. I wasn't a hidden thing. So for the people out here who think they're exclusive with these people, especially someone who claims to be high profile, that has a social media presence, they have an online presence. But I'm looking, looking at these women's pictures. I don't see none of these women on none, none of his social media. And please don't be the thing where I got to keep a low profile and I can't. That has nothing to do with you being a rap star, a rock star, or nothing. And and what and was Mocha on their social media profiles? I don't know. You know, this has been a while ago. For some of these women, this happened uh, 2021, 2022. This, it wasn't recent. The women that came forward in the story. But my question is, when you think you're exclusive with somebody... I need some proof of exclusive that we're exclusive. I don't care how famous you're supposed to be. If you love me and we're together, and especially if you're living with me, I'm at your house, but I'm not on your social media. How exclusive can you be? So I say, ladies and gentlemen, watch out for that. You're my only one and only man. You're my only one and only girl. I love you. I want to be with you. But I can't put you on my social media. 
I can't tell my family and friends about you. Does family and friends know about these women? Again, they supposed to be exclusive. I don't. I didn't see any proof of, of any. I went and looked all over the internet. He didn't have pictures of not one. Now one. No. Now one of these women posted nowhere that I seen. I may be wrong, but that's just me. So these women think they exclusive. They nowhere on the internet. Um, number three, the biggest thing. Number three. Why? Why? Why are we giving people money? But I love you. That's what Bobby said. Good morning, Tiffany. Good morning, Bobby. I knew Mocha was a scammer. I kept telling y'all, I said, this man don't seem like something's not right. I told y'all this last year. And number three, why are we giving people we in a relationship money? Who the fuck? I'm sorry, y'all. I hate to cuss. But who the fuck in 2024 that you a grown woman? These women were in their 30s, their 40s. Some of these women look like they was in their 50s. Okay. Are giving people money. I don't know how long each one of these women knew Mocha, how long they thought they were with him. Look, I'm gonna tell y'all right now, child. Anyway, I came here to slay today. Okay, we finna slay. I had I was married. I've been in long-term relationships. I have been in short-term relationships. I've been in situationships. I've been a mistress, which I highly recommend, recommend being a mistress. Being a side chick and being a mistress is some of the best times I've ever had. I'm not even going to say that. I'm going to do a whole video about being a side bitch because I ain't never had so much fun being a side bitch ever. When I was a known side piece, I got all the perks and none of the, none of the fucking headache. He had a wife. He had four kids. I was over here. I was taken care of. I ain't to worry about shit. I don't give a damn what that man did. But I was taken care of. Yeah, Tiffany said, sorry, but I will never give nobody money. Hell no. So my question is, you in a relationship with somebody? You exclusive with this person? I don't know how long they knew Mocha. It didn't seem like it was very long. You ain't even been to this person's house. You ain't even met their family. You don't. They didn't even know where that motherfucker really lived. They ain't even been to his apartment. Bitch, they been to an Airbnb. I told y'all the other story about my friend who got who got got by this dude where he was taking women to an Airbnb. Baby, they'll take you to an Airbnb and be like, this my place. It'd be an Airbnb. They ain't one in real house. But why in this day and age, ladies and gentlemen, are we giving money to people that we're dating? Why? If somebody's coming to you talking about... I, I, I need an investment, bitch. You better, you, you, you know, uh, I got a, I got a banker. I got, I got a good, I belong to three banks and two investment firms. I can give you some tips on what bank you need to use and what investment firm you need to invest with. That That's all I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you money advice. I'm going to give you advice, how you can save up your money. And, and for that studio that you want Mocha, you can save up for that studio. Let me give you some financial tips. Let me, let me, let me, let me put you on to a good, a good budget plan. Let, let me put you on to some investing. I tell you what stocks to invest in, but I tell you one thing. I tell you one thing. I'm not a bank. I'm not an investor. I'm not here to fund your lifestyle. I'm not here to give you a loan. I'm not here. To, I'm not, I'm not here to hear your excuses. You don't have the credit for it? Oh, well, let me give you some. Look, he if his credit wasn't good enough, guess what? He should have asked Michael and Justine, since they're doing credit repair, since they're doing credit repair, why didn't you ask Michael and Justine? Mocha, they're repairing credit. If you didn't have enough money to get them loans, you didn't have the right credit. Apparently, Michael and Justin are doing credit repair. Why didn't he ask them? Why are you asking women that you're dating for money, for your business, to invest in your business? I'm not an investment firm. Well, he needed to pay his electricity in his car. He needed to get new tires for his car. Who gives a fuck? This face is a face of I don't care if you're rolling around on raggedy tire. I don't care if you're rolling around on rims and them bitches got sparks and they on fire. What does that have to do with me and my relationship? What does that have to do with Kiki? Nothing. What does that have to do with me, y'all? And make sure y'all thumbs up the video and like the video and subscribe and hit, hit the notification bell. Yeah, Mocha needed a real... Mocha was scamming these women and living off of these women money. So I don't want to 
to hear anybody talking about in 2024, 20, in this day and age that it can't happen. It is happening right now. Right now, as I do this video, there is some crazy dude or some crazy lady giving money to somebody. And like I said, scammers are not necessarily in Nigeria or China or Eastern Europe. They're here. There are people scamming from here. Americans. And I'm not trying to blame the victim. I'm not saying these women are stupid. But I... I Mocha need to give, give, go live in a homeless shelter. Right. Oh, you know what, baby? I can't really pay for my rent right now. And uh, I, here's my look. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Can't you go stay with your mama or your sister or your, one of your homeboys? Because you ain't, what you're not going to do, you're not coming to stay with me. What you're not going to do, I'm not giving you money. If you go, if you're a grown ass man and talking about, you don't have stable income or you don't have the credit enough to buy a business or you don't have the money to get this business or you need an investment from me and we don't even know each other like that. You better ask your family, you better ask your, can't you got family and friends to ask? Why are you asking me for money? Delete, block, move on. The moment he would have been like, well, I don't care if you need a money for a fucking ham sandwich. Delete, block, move on. So I tell, I ask people out there, in 2024, are people really dating people and giving them money? I don't understand that. I don't get it. I was married. I was married. Before me and my husband got together, my husband did not have a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of. My husband was nine years younger than me. He lived with his parents. He worked at Long John Silver's and he was putting himself through school. My husband did not never once, and now once, ever fix his mouth to be like I need some money I had an apartment I had a car I had a job working for, for Citibank as, in customer service and I was going to school his financial issues and what he was going on had to do with between him and his family had not a fucking thing to do with me what hey. parents <laughs> ladies and gentlemen how are we raising the, how are we raising our children? Cause my kids know my kids are like, <laughs> I mean, I, I can't understand it as a woman in particular, because as a woman, I, all these women are out here are like, okay, I just, I, I need a minute. Y'all let me, let me, oh, let me open my car door and get some air because I like, all these men out here talking about women need six figures and women need this to, to be in a relationship. Obviously, the fuck not. Don't give me this shit. Don't give me this shit that women want rich men when women are out here giving $27,000 to this broke ass struggle rapper. Please do not go there with me. Don't tell me that women want men with, want, with money when you got women out here giving men thousands and thousands of dollars that they probably won't even give their own family money. I know people out here that wouldn't even get a sister and their kids fucking ten thousand dollars, but they get with a dude and be like, "Oh yeah, honey, I, I, I know you pay me back, you know, I don't, you know, like we event. Oh, you gonna pay me back? You gonna pay me back? Oh, I love you, I love you too. What? They wouldn't even give their own family ten thousand dollars. They wouldn't even give their own family a hundred dollars. But let some dude slide in their fucking DMs and be like, "I'm a rapper. I'm famous. I got clout. Oh my god, da 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 da. da. Let, let me borrow ten thousand dollars." But you wouldn't even give your own family money, y'all. I don't even want to get your own kids money. He definitely has a type. I, I, I am not that star for love, attention, sex, affection to give no motherfucker no money. Okay? I can say many things. I will give up the cookie. I will give some sloppy toppy. You know, you know I, I, I will bust it wide open. But my money, I'm like, wait a minute now. <laughs> yeah, no. You know, at least with, with sex, I'm getting something out of it. But if I give you $27,000 and I don't get the money back, I'm just getting scammed. Good morning, GSP. Good morning, everybody. I'm not getting anything out of it. So the idea that these women in, in this day and age, when the narrative, the fucking narrative is, 
oh my god women are so greedy oh my god women are so educated and 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 women can't find men because they're too picky where 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 god damn it where where what picky women who who there are millions of women out here giving men money y'all millions worldwide worldwide i don't want to hear these narratives about women being too picky i don't want to hear these narratives about women want a man with six figures i don't want to hear these narratives about women only women are gold diggers where these men are out here making hand over fist money and i promise you that that the statistics are not correct i promise you these women are embarrassed and there are a lot more women out here with struggle ass ninjas laying up in their homes i've said it over and over again there are a lot of women out here with struggle dudes gsp so the ex owe her, owe her over 50k and it ain't got nothing with you being a big back it ain't got nothing with you being ugly or fat or dumb or uneducated or white or black nothing it has nothing to do with that. I don't want to hear these dating narratives out here about women being too picky and women being too educated and women want this and men can't get a chance. And did, there are women out here with dudes laying on their couch right now, eating their kids fruit snacks and drinking up all their kids high C and Capri Sun. There are women out there that they are going to work, that their man is, is driving their fucking car right now and their man is sitting at home watching this goddamn video right now. Just sitting on their couch like this. Yup. Yo, she telling the truth. Yo. I mean, there are women out there supporting men. I don't want to hear this narrative. A low self-esteem has nothing to do with what you look like, how educated you are, where you live, your, your skin color has nothing to do with nothing. It happens. It's sad that it happens. I don't want it to happen, but it happens. But I am fucking sick of these narratives. Of women that that be, if we're single, we're the problem. Do y'all not understand what's happening out here on online dating? There are people out here who are losing their lives. There are people out here scamming people out of their money. Do y'all not understand what's happening? There are, there are people out here who are sick in the mind, who are schizophrenic, who are crazy, who, who are sick in the mind, who are preying upon people on these online apps. Don't y'all understand? So don't become a victim. There is no reason why you, as a person, should be funding anyone's business venture or investing, unless, unless it's an investment firm or an investment company. There's no reason why you should be buying crypto for, from anybody. There's, there's no reason why you should be doing any of that. If you're dating someone, they should be dating you for you. If they love you, they love you for you. There's no way in hell, no matter how destitute I would ever become, that I would be sitting up here and asking somebody, I've been dating for six months. Well, I have a hard time paying my mortgage. So could you give me some money? I have family and friends to ask that for. I would ask somebody I'm dating to, to, to give me a loan when I can go to a bank and get a loan. If I don't have the credit to get a loan, again, ask Michael and Juju to fix your credit, Mocha. Credit repair, because that's what they're doing, right? There's no reason why a grown ass man should be asking any women anywhere for money. There's no reason why a grown ass woman is going to come to her boyfriend and be like, um, could you, I really want to buy this uh, uh, storefront and I need you to invest. Honey, you, 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 business and pleasure should not be mixed just on principle alone. You don't shit where you eat. I've learned that a long time ago. You don't, you, you don't F where you eat and you don't shit where you eat. So in other words, you don't do things to burn bridges and, 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 and do dirty things to people that have something to do with your business. And you don't involve, you don't involve your, your boyfriends, girlfriends, uh, 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 side bitches in, 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 in what you're doing in your business ventures. Now, if you're married to the person, yes, you go into a partnership. That's a joint venture. But if somebody that you're not married to, and that you're not living with, that you barely know that you met off a dating app and you want it, you want to fund their business? No. Why, why why? This is the stuff I was talking about in my last video about romance scams. This still goes on, ladies. I don't know why people are like, who could be this dumb? Every day I have more evidence. I'm like, 
Oh, well, surely they wouldn't. And surely this lady wouldn't give Mocha eighteen thousand. Oh, okay, she did. Surely she wouldn't let him. If if a man is telling you that that there are over three thousand members, yeah, on 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 the, oh yeah, in that group and that Mocha scam page, and I'm sure a lot of the women are embarrassed and don't want to come forward. But the fact that they have so many people that's joined, obviously he's scamming people all over the country, worldwide even. I just had to say, women, are we this desperate to where we feel like if I don't give this person some money, then they're not going to be with me or they're not going to talk to me or they're going to be disappointed in me or they're not going to, they, you know, they're, they're going to think something. And then that person don't want to be with you for you. That person's being there with you for your money. I don't understand. I, I just, I, I, somebody help me under, somebody put it in the damn comments when I post this video. Y'all please help me understand because I don't understand. I grew up where you don't break bread with nobody. I was married. Me and my husband had separate accounts. I was married. My husband, we had separate accounts, y'all, when we were married. My husband didn't even, I tell y'all a story, my husband didn't even know how much money I made for a long time. Because I grew up where you have to protect your assets and have to protect your money because you cannot control what another person's going to do. I learned that from my grandmother. My grandmother said, you don't, you don't never let a man know how much money you have, how much money in the bank, and how much money you make. It, I think when my husband died, he didn't know how much money I had in my bank account. I know how I had access to his bank account. He did not have access to mine. And I told my husband, I said, look, you can either be salty about this or you can just move on. My husband was like, well, you move on. Well, other people, I know how other people do marriages. I know what, what y'all been told. I know. I know what y'all been told. You, you get married. You you, you you get account together. You pool your money. It, I, look, I understand the brainwashing that you guys have received about money in this country and in relationships and all this shit. But I'm telling you right now, you have to do whatever works for you. And what worked for me as a person and me and my husband is we had separate accounts when we were married. I knew... I was better at money because I was good at money and my husband liked to spend too much money. So I would balance his account and make sure his account, but he didn't, he didn't, fuck, he didn't touch mine. He didn't have access to mine because he knew I was good with money. He trusted My husband trusted me enough to be like, I know she good with her money. And what my money was my money. Now we, we, we had things that we bought, but my husband had, we had separate cars. He had a car. I had a car. He had a car payment. I had a car payment. The two did not mix. Why would I pay my husband's car payment for what? That's his car. He'd be like, I ain't paying my wife's car. And I, if a situation came where he lost his job, and he did, then a situation came where you get laid off or something like that, then I don't mind. But the idea that that our, that that money has anything to do with, with the level of love in my relationship, it did not. I love my husband more than anything else. My husband loved me more than anything else. But money was money, and it wasn't personal. Honey, it's just money. Tiffany said, when I married, I had to keep my bank account separate from my ex-husband. Right. I will never, I will never share. I, I've never shared an account with a man ever. I've never broke. I've never had a man. I've asked me for a loan or asked me for any kind of money. The answer would be fuck no. And, and, and hell no. It, like I said, I was married y'all. My husband knew that if he was in a money type situation, we come together and we talk about it. Okay. What's going on? Can you not pay this bill? We paid the bill separately. My husband, we paid the bill separately. We paid the mortgage separately. We paid electricity separately. I did not live in a situation where I'm living in this house and my husband's paying all the bills. That We made around the same amount of money. Even it came to the point in time my husband was making a little bit more than me. But still, that it didn't matter. It's not like I, I can see maybe if your incomes are really uneven. But I've never been with somebody that my income was really uneven. I've always been with people that we've kind of made around the same amount of money. But we made around the same amount of money. So we split everything down the middle. When we would go to the grocery store, we would, we would split the bill. Tiffany said, I don't repeat. Don't trust nobody, period, especially when it comes to my money. Never. Never trust nobody. And if somebody want to get in their feelings about it, tell them, to, tell them to step off and move on. Nobody should ever be in their feelings about not sharing money with you in a relationship. I am not going to go to a man and be like, hey, I need a loan. I've never in my life, in my life, even cross my mind to be like okay i need to go buy a new house well i really need a loan i'm going to a bank <laughs> i've never thought like well maybe i need to ask the man that i'm with he seems like he got money i'm just gonna ask you for a loan i need expenses to move 
I need I need to get my car fixed. I had one of my cars break down last week. Why in the hell would I go to somebody I'm dating and be like, well, my car needs to be repaired and I don't have the money for it? That just means I'm a broke bitch. <laughs> that, that just means I need to get my weight up, Kiki. Like, I never thought in my mind, let me go ask the person I'm dating for a loan. Why? They, they're not my parent. They're not my, they're not my family member. If I'm desperate enough for money, I have family and friends I can ask for that. Why would I risk ruin my relationship by dragging money into it? A person who do that is because they don't care about you. They just care about the money. They don't care about the relationship. They care about the money. So I would say out there in 2024, y'all, y'all, we, we ladies, you know, we, we just have to do better. Like y'all, y'all are stressing me out over this. Y'all, y'all are really stressing me out. Like I said, I didn't even think this was a real thing up until a couple of months ago when I started getting in these Reddit groups and started reading about all these, these people, men and women. Oh, I sent my ex $5,000. Bitch, you, I'll be like, let, let me get my cash app. Let me, let, 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 okay. Let me get, let, let me get my cash app and my Venmo out here. Cause I'm like, if y'all are going around sending people money and shit, I mean, damn, y'all can send me some, y'all can send your girl some, some money. Okay. I'm Coco Thighs. Yes. I know. Don't, don't, don't trip on that. I'm Coco Thighs on Cash App. Like, I mean, if y'all want to send me some money, y'all go ahead and send me some money. You know, at least y'all get, I, I'll, you'll get more value out of me. You know, I have a whole coffee link that I'm going to put it in this video. So if y'all want to send your girl $5 for some coffee, you go right ahead. Because since, since you people are here giving out money like it's Christmas, I figure at least, you know, give it to me. You know, I ain't trying to scam you. G bitch, give me some money. And they'll say, but I love you. I know, but I love you. But I'm like, were the women this lonely? Ladies, are y'all this lonely? Men, are y'all this lonely? I don't give a damn if I never have another man for the rest of my life. I don't give a damn if I never have sex for the rest of my life. Wait, wait. Let me take that back. I don't give a damn if I don't have a man for the rest of my life. If I don't get married or I don't have a boyfriend for the rest of my life. Now, I take back the sex thing. Now, I ain't, I ain't, now look, I ain't going to go there. But I'm not going to pay for it. <laughs> I'm not going to pay for it. But I don't care if I be lo lonely for the rest of my life. If I never have a relationship, I'm not giving any, any man money to be in a relationship with me. I'm not. <laughs> I'm just not. And I just feel that if people are that neat, that people out here are that needy or they don't feel greedy about their money. There are some people out here, they're very flippant about money. I'm not very flippant. I don't care how much money I have. You can never be too rich or too beautiful, honey. Ain't nothing going on but the rent, what Tiffany said. I, GSP said, I think they manip manipulate a certain type of person. I do. There are people out there that have certain types of attitudes towards relationships and towards money that I totally don't vibe with that I want to smack just smack them across the I don't vibe with there are people out here who feel like they're in a relationship and 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 they should be giving and 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 they you know and they let this person sweet talk there's nothing any man mocha ain't even that cute there's nothing any man could ever say to me or 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 convince me of to give them money there is there is no there's no D that good. I don't I don't give a damn if you're looking like Austin Butler. Whew. I mean I love oh look look I love Austin Butler. If a man moved in my life and was like babe, I was like oh. <laughs> but Austin Butler, you're so handsome. You know like you can look good, but I ain't but but Chad. I'm only talking about uh I need to borrow what you need to borrow what bitch you ain't even get no gas money from me, honey. Like I will go half on dates. I don't mind paying going Dutch on dates. I don't mind that. I, I'm not looking for a man to, let me clear up, to finance me. I'm not looking for a man to give me money. I'm not looking for a person to finance my bills and pay my bills and finance my kids. I'm not looking for that. So why would I expect that out of a man? I, I wouldn't expect that out of a man. I want a man to be able, be, be able to... Happy, happy Monday, happy Monday. I want a man to be able to take care of himself and really not me. If a man is telling me, well, I can't afford to get my car fixed or I can't afford to pay for my business, block, delete, block, delete. You're not the man for me. You have to be financially stable. GSP says, GSP, I had never asked, Tiffany said, I never asked my parents about money either. I never, I, 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 I can truly say I'm going to end this conversation with this. 
I can truly say that I am a self-made person. I, I am, you're looking at a 110% self-made person. When I was 18 years old, I moved out of my, I moved out of my, my mom's, my grandmother's um, house. I didn't have to. I could live with my grandmother forever, but I wanted to be grown and wanted to do, do grown and hood rat shit with my friends. So I wanted to be grown. So I moved out of my house when I was 18, right? Right. I worked two jobs and put myself through school while I lived in an apartment by myself. I didn't, I've never had a roommate. I ain't had no dude lay up in my house. Never. Tiffany says she on the work bill. I'm all about my business. I stand on business by myself. You got any $5,000 in Bitcoin? Child, I don't care. I'm sorry. I ain't got it. I ain't got $5,000 in Bitcoin. I got Bitcoin, but not that much. But I, when I was 18 years old, I moved out of my grandmother's house. I didn't have to go. My grandmother, I could have easily lived with her forever. But I want to do grown stuff. Like I said, I want to do her best stuff for my friends. I wanted to be grown. I found, I went out, found an apartment. I didn't have no co-signer on the apartment. The apartment was in my name. Again, this is a lot of years ago. And this was many years ago. Many, many years ago when I was 18. So many years, so many years, like. How old was I when I was 18? Oh, Lord, it's like 30, 31 years ago, okay? When I was 18, okay? So, over 30 years ago when I was 18, I live I lived by myself. I lived by myself. I worked two jobs. I had a call center job, and then I had a job working at Schlotzky's, the sandwich place. And I also went to school. I went to school on the weekends. I went to school on Saturdays. I was all day in school. I went eight hours a day in school. I was going to school. I, I, I had school. I had financial aid for school. So I did have help there. But I paid bills and I did everything on my own. I thought about that the other day. I, I never borrowed money from nobody. I I don't owe anybody any money. I've never had to ask anybody for, for any money. I, 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 would, I, I was good with money at an early age. I knew how to budget and balance my money. And I've always worked. I've worked two jobs forever. Off and on in my life, I've worked two jobs. It's only in the past... 10 years that I've actually become really financially financially stable. But I've always worked hard. Nobody's ever given me anything. Whenever my what all the cars that I've got have been in my name. My utility bills have always been in my name. Even they weren't even in my husband's name. I never had a car not in my husband's name. Now my husband had a car in my name. I was a co-signer. I was a co-signer on it, on his old car. GSP said get creative and hustle to get money. Yeah, I've I've always worked two jobs. And, and still had time enough to go out with my friends and party and hang out. I, I did all that, you know. But I had my own one-bedroom apartment. I've had efficiencies. I, I, I had a loft. One time I had a loft. I, I, I had, like, there was a loft upstairs, and then I had a bedroom downstairs. So, I, so, like, people thought I had, like, I was doing really good. And I was like, I was doing really good. I still do really good. But I've always been independent. But I, have no, I can say nobody's helped me with nothing. Nothing. I didn't, I didn't have parents who, who had money. None of my family had money like that. My family borrowed money from me. If anything, my family come to me and be like, I need money now. But I, I, I didn't borrow any money from nobody. I didn't live with nobody. I didn't have roommates. Whenever my car broke down, I didn't have anyone to go to and like, could you fix my car? I didn't have a hookup man to hook up free cable. I didn't have none of that. I had to do everything on my own. My car broke down. I had to go get it fixed. I had to get it towed and get it fixed. If I didn't have a car, I had to take the bus. I took public, public transportation. I didn't have nobody to come pick me up. I have lived a life where truly, 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 I have been out here on my own since I was 18. Where I, when, when by the time I got in my 20s, I was taking care of my grandmother. I was taking care of my little cousins. I was helping other people out. By the time I hit about 25, 26, and I graduated, went through college, and did all put myself through school, I was helping other people. I have never had anyone help me. The things that people describe in relationships, I've never had that. I've had relationships. I've, I've dated people long term. I've been married. When, we, when, when I was married to my husband, that's the only time in my life where I ever felt like I wasn't on my own is when I was married. Yeah, I had. Yeah, I did have a free. I had a cable scrambler. I did, girl. I did that. I bought one from a from one of my uh, ex coworkers. But girl, yeah, I remember back in the day when people get that bootleg cable, girl. But yeah, the only time I, I ever not felt on my on, on my own truly is when my husband, me and my husband, lived together. But it wasn't a financial thing. It was like we're kind of in this together. Like if shit hit the fan, if I needed to ride to work, my car broke down and I needed to ride to work, then I would have my husband there to help me. If 
something happened where he like he got laid off one time i got laid off one time then i knew i had we had another income we had money saved in the bank that's the only time i've ever really felt i, I had to say truly safe financially because i'm paranoid about my money is when my husband was there. That's the only time I really had somebody. Even when my mama lived with me, y'all. Y'all know my mama made she rest be living with me. I was taking care of my mother. My mama had doctor's appointments. She had COPD. My mom had medication that I was paying for. My mom did not work. My mom took care of my kids. She helped me when I was working. I used to work a lot. I used to work a lot, lot when my mom first moved here. And I was widowed. I was on my own. I had two kids. And my mom came down here. My mom was working. And then eventually my mom stopped working and she would while i was working 10 12 hours a day she was taking care of my kids she was help cleaning the house she was help cooking she was like my backup parent for a long time so that's the only two times in my life that i've ever felt loved and cherished and supported is with my husband and with my mom as an adult as an adult as an adult and so to lose my husband and now lose my mother it's hard. You know, it's hard. Even when I had my five-year relationship, I didn't feel loved and I didn't feel protected and I didn't feel cared for. And that's one of the reasons why we're not together. So I'm not going to cry, y'all. Because when, you know, y'all know when I talk about my husband, I get emotional. I'm talking about my mama. But those are the only two people that in my adult life where I ever felt like I was secure and loved and protected. And it had nothing to do with money. It just had to do with them I know I can trust them and rely upon them to be there. And so I'm a self-made person. I'm a really, truly self-made person. I've had, I when they talk about people pulling themselves up by their bootstraps, I'm a little girl from the hood who grew up in a hood, who grew up in a broken home, who, who, who parents did not raise me, that I grew up in a broken home and where my parents did not raise me. And I grew up in the hood, in the ghetto. I was going to be another fucking statistic, y'all. I could have got pregnant. I could have got hooked on drugs. I could have been incarcerated. None of that happened to me because my mother moved me down here to Texas and got me out of that environment and, and literally saved my life. And so my life could have went left and it's gone this way. But all my life, I've been taught that I have to work for everything that I want, that I cannot rely upon a man or other people or relatives or anything to fund my lifestyle. And the fact that there are people out here taking advantage of good people and funding their lifestyle and, and, and doing things and scamming people, it really hurt hurts me as somebody who who is very independent and feel like everybody should be independent. There's nothing wrong with needing a little help sometimes. There's nothing wrong with asking for help. I have a lot of pride, I have a hard time asking for help. So that's another issue with me. But yes, I did I did I love my husband very much. I miss him. His 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 uh It'll be 10 years in April since my husband's passed away. I can't believe it. It, it. it felt like. It doesn't feel like 10 years, but it's been 10 years since my husband's passed. And then my mother passed in April as well. And so. My husband and my mother died in the same month around the same time. So April is not good for me. And then my son's birthday is right after that. <laughs> so. Ten years ago in April, my husband died right before my son's birthday. And then a year ago, on April the 12th, my mother passed away. It's very hard. So April is 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 not, not a good month for me. And it's coming up. But then I have to be happy because it's my son's birthday. It's my son's 14th birthday. So it has been hard. She, Tiffany said, thank you, Jesus, that happened to me or my daughter. I, I, I thank the universe every day that I've never been scammed. That I've never had, I, I had the sense enough, the wherewithal not to give anybody my fucking money. <laughs> and I, and I thank, I thank the universe and thank my grandmother for raising, not raising no food and, and not raising a, a generous, because some people don't want to be perceived as being stingy, I guess. Maybe that's it. I don't know. Y'all let me know. I, I, I'm going to get off this live, but that's just a little bit about my life. And, and what I, I've experienced. And then so that's why it hits me so hard. Because I'm like there's people out here. That are just throwing their money away. To people out here who don't deserve it. And they're real struggling people. Honey they're, they're real. They're organizations. I tell people if you want to throw your money away. 
There are organizations out here that are helping people, that are helping people who are homeless. There are organizations out here that are helping single mothers. There are organizations out here that are helping animals. There are so many people out here and things and people and animals that need um, help. And the idea that you give me $27,000 to just broke-ass ninja? I mean, why? Thank you, Sirkin. Um... Thank you. I appreciate it. And and, I, and welcome. And then the idea that people are out here giving money and there are people out here really suffering, like really, really suffering out here in your city. They're 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 unhoused people. They're, they're trying to criminalize being homeless in California. They've criminalized it here in Texas. They arrest you for being homeless here in certain cities. There are city ordinances that are trying to put these homeless people in jails which we don't even have a space in jails to even put these homeless people in. There, there, there are mothers out here who go to women's shelters. There are people out here who are running away from abuse with their pets. And they can't even bring their pets into these shelters so they go stay on the streets. So in Dallas, I know that what the organization that, that I try to give money to, we try to work with, is trying to provide shelter for people's pets when they're when when they're homeless when they get kicked out and you're abused and you have your pet and you don't want to leave your pet there with that food so there's a lot of shelters that don't take pets and so there are a lot of um animal shelters out here that are struggling after after y'all don't little, little things y'all don't know that i do like after the pandemic a lot of people went out and got animals and y'all they returning these animals y'all like these are the things that i get upset really upset about you know, people returning animals because it's the pandemic's over. So people started returning the animals back to these. It just, I can't even talk about it. Y'all know the kids and the animals thing get me. Like, I'll be crying up here. I'll be in, on this live stream just bawling like a two-year-old. They got punched in the teeth. But I, you know, over animals and kids. Like, animals and kids is my soft spot. Yeah, and then they want to close the border, y'all. People are people. I'm in Texas. People are people. It, it, you can't help where people are born, you know. Yeah, oh, no, they won't close the border. Oh, well, they, they, it, at this particular point in time, it's a political issue. They have a, a bill, a border bill online, but they, I'm not on, I'm not online. I mean, in Congress, I don't know why I said line, but they, they keep trying to block it because they're trying to use it as a political football. The immigration issue could have been fixed literally 30 years ago when I was younger, 20 years ago, every 10 years, this is an issue and they could have easily fixed it, but people don't want to fix it. I'm in Texas. I'm telling you, they don't want to fix it. I tell you, my ex works for a construction company. Most of the people that they hire are illegals. The people who come do my lawn, the people who come do my lawn here are here illegally. The people who work on these lawn crews, these companies, they have companies where you can go online and have people come and do your lawn. Most of these people here are here illegally. So if they close the borders, they're going to lose half of their labor force, especially here in Texas. I'm in Texas, baby. Half of our population is Hispanic. A lot of them are here legally or illegally. They're going to lose these farms out here, um, these, these, these frontline jobs out here, these low-paying jobs out here. I'm like, y'all can, people can use this politically if they want to. But at, but at the end of the day, people like cheap, companies like cheap labor. You would stop immigration in its tracks if you would make it illegal for companies to hire these people. You would stop it in its tracks. People wouldn't even come here no more. Do you know that these companies go over to Mexico and they put up billboards talking about come, come over to the border and come work here? That they do that here? They, they, there's, there's cities like Brownsville in South Texas that you go and there's billboards everywhere with companies advertising, farms advertising to come work here. In these South Texas cities, I've been to South Texas. I've seen these border towns where they have signs up. These companies have, have signs up saying, come work here. Yeah, by the way, when you illegally cross the border, come work here. <laughs> yeah, so if they would stop these companies, make it illegal for them to hire these people. But then again, these companies don't want to do that because they don't want to pay Americans $12 an hour to pick no fruit. They want to pay the minimum wage. It's cheap labor. Cheap labor make the world go around. Immigration makes the world go around. I don't care if you're in America, if you're in Europe, if you're in France, wherever they be. Cheap labor makes the world go around. And in, 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 in any country. And when you don't have immigration in your country, look, look what's happening in South Korea about all the medical um, doctors are over there are 
are boycotted because they don't have enough medical staff in South Korea. So, so they're boycotting. They're like on strike because they're trying to lower, they're trying to get more people. But the reason why they're, the reason why South Korea doesn't have enough blue collar workers and menial workers is because their edu their population is highly educated. And so they don't want to, if you have a PhD, you sure in the hell don't, don't want to be working at a, a bubble coffee shop. So they have a huge deficit in like construction workers, cleaning workers, da da da. They, all the young people don't want them kind of jobs. The only solution they really have that is immigration. That's the only solution. So now South Korea is turning more because they, they have a hard immigration process. They, they have blocked people from other countries. It makes it really hard to go live in Korea. And you can only live there for certain types and certain types of jobs that you can have. But now they're to the point where there's, they, they are so desperate for a labor force that they're thinking about opening up they're in changing their immigration laws to have other people come from other countries to attract them to South Korea because I mean that it is what it is. You have a highly educated population who all fight for these white collar jobs. Can't everybody be a civil servant or or a doctor or a lawyer or work in an office building? But that's where that's where the money is at. So they just they don't have enough people. The people who are working construction jobs are older people. Like I watched, I watched that. I love South Korea. I found South Korea very fascinating because their economy grew faster than what their society has. So they're experiencing South Korea is some of the most high. I mean, I could go, I could talk on and on about South Korea because they have low birth rates, they have high death rates, they have unalive rates. Some of the highest unalive rates in the world is in South Korea, and it's sad for somebody who loves K-pop who loves South Korean culture and food and, and, and everything, but to learn about what's really happening going on there in their society and how depressed people are, how sad people are, how they're having mock funerals in South Korea, how people, they, they have a suit, they have a, I can't say that word, they have a bridge that is notoriously known that people jump off of. Like it's, it's in how materialistic their society is and how it's all about image and about what you look and what you wear and people feel like they can't keep up so they just unalive themselves all the time and it's something that people don't talk about and then um their healthcare industry if you're uh, disabled there it's not good because they look at you as something crazy you know you're disabled nobody wants to take care of you like it's baby south korea go through it and kind of see parallels of what's happening here and they now they admit that like the reason why we don't have enough workers is because we don't have enough people wanting these jobs and we need to bring immigrants in. They need to bring people from other countries in. And then you hear the United States where we have destabilized the entire world. We've destabilized Chile and Peru and Mexico and we've put tariffs and, and embargoes on certain countries. So people are like, I can't make a living here. So of course I want to go to the United States. And then they come here and they think it's all roses and it's not. Our inflation is high. Our cost of living is high. Have you seen the let it rot in China where they literally like, yeah, let it rot is a whole movement in China where they just like, where the young people don't want to work no more. They have that in Korea and Japan where the young people just don't, they live off their parents and they just sit in their room all day and they don't want to work. They said, let it rot. Yeah, they, 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 they people are tired of the rat race and, and they tired of, you know, cause People over there in, in, in Asian countries, they work hard. They work really, really hard. And India too. Like we're talking about working 10, 12 hours a day. They work, they get like two days off a month. Like people in America think they work hard. We we do not. They work really hard over there. And I feel bad for them. But that's that's that their culture is of working hard, working hard, working hard. But now the young people are like, you know, with the internet came and things are more international, people see how other people are living. So the young people over there are like, we, 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 we check out that. They don't, they're like, no, we ain't doing that. We ain't doing that. So the young people are like, mm -hmm. they, they just, they let that go. So we, yeah, they, they don't want to work. Yeah, the 669. Yeah. Yeah, they do. They do. And China is so bad that like, you know, th their economy is going down because of the recession. And then, um, they, they have it to where the young people don't want to work. And then on top of that, I tell people in other countries don't want to get married. I keep telling y'all, I keep preaching, I keep banging the drum of this. Do y'all not understand that marriage rates are down worldwide? People talk about people here don't get married and people here get the baby. South Korea, their birth rates, marriage rates are, are low. People are not, people like, it costs too much money to have kids. There's no advantages in getting married. Marriage rates are down worldwide 
And these third world countries that you think, oh, these are traditional women and traditional baby China. They bet they they I told you the matchmaking businesses in China and India are, are millions upon millions of dollars of industries because people are not marrying. People are not. The only people having a lot of babies are in Africa, especially Nigeria and Ghana and in India. Those are the only people that are having a bunch of huge population of people. Marriage rates and birth rates are down worldwide in different degrees. The Asian countries, like, they are in a panic because they don't know what the, because their population is aging faster than, than, than the young people. So they, they are in a panic because they don't know what they're going to do. Birth rates is down. The, the, the young people ain't, ain't marrying. They in a panic over there. And then people talk about America. Birth rate, I mean, people here aren't marrying. Birth rates are down there too. That's just the dichotomy of us living in a world global culture. The more money you make, the marriage rates round. The poor, the poorer country you have, the higher the marriage rates. That's just it's just the truth. They kind of go hand in hand. The more China started becoming a superpower, China women become more educated. The Chinese women become have make 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 more money. Things become less traditional. Now Chinese women are like, you know, they they getting married later and later. Because then in China, when you get married, you have to leave your career, you have to leave your job. And the women are like, I don't really want to do that. You know, the world is online so they can see why, what, what everybody else has. Yeah. So everybody's looking like, well, how are they doing it over there? What y'all doing over there? Well, I don't want to do that. Well, why, why do they get to do that and we don't get to do that? It's just how it is. So I'm telling people, people talking about people in America can't find nobody. And you got these men who are in sales. Baby, they have it in, in Japan and Korea, too. Men and women worldwide are lonely. Worldwide, y'all. So don't fall for it. So don't don't have these, don't have your friends. I understand that people get in these little social bubbles where all their friends are married, all their friends are having children, all they, you know, most of they they co-workers maybe. But I tell people, get 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 when when you walk around with blinders like this, this is all you see in front of you. You walking around like this with with blinders on. That's all you see. I tell people to drop the blinders. Look around you. Expand your horizons. Just go online and start looking. Start going in these Reddit groups, these single Reddit groups, and see what people are talking about. Start start going in these Facebook groups and just join and just you ain't gotta comment. Just start reading what people are talking about. Reading about other people's experiences. Go online and look up documentaries about dating in other cultures and other countries and marriage in other cultures and other countries. And then you start realizing, okay, I'm not the only one. I'm not the only person out here feeling like this. Go if you're on dating apps, go out and do research about how people are in dating apps worldwide. What are the numbers? What are the things? There's so, so many things you can Google and vlogs you can read and things that you can look up and you will be surprised, surprised and shocked to know what's really happening. And then you will see what's going on worldwide when it comes to dating. Go in there if you feel like you're being scammed. If you if you, you don't really know, you're like, ah, he might be tricking me. I don't know. Go online and read about romance scams there's military romance scams there's business there's crypto there's 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 foreign there's domestic there's, there's all kinds of things out there that, that it's just for you you have to learn at the end of the day you have to protect yourself your mind your heart you have to protect yourself so go and protect yourself don't be a victim don't find another mocha you know if you if you if you're looking at yourself in the mirror and you know your ass ain't a dime piece if you're looking in the mirror and you're like, I'm kind of wrinkled, I'm real old as fuck, and then some 20-something year old thing is trying to talk to you, yeah, you, 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 you know, I, you give, I don't, keep your head on a swivel and be suspicious of, of, of people's motivations when it comes, um, <laughs> she said, I moved on to Turkmen Turkmen Turkmenistan? <laughs> Girl, I'm, about, I, I'm going to go get my passport today. I'm going to try to try to uh, go see this world, and I'm not worried. I'm not. I'm not studying none of these men. Like my grandma, you say, I ain't studying these men. I ain't, I'm not worried about whether I'm in a relationship or another relationship. Update, sad update. I was supposed to go out with my ex this weekend, but that didn't work out. Once again, I, 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 I. I Never, I, I'm not even phased. I'm not even shocked anymore about my ex's behavior. I'm just kind of like, look up Turkmenistan. It's fascinating. I'm looking up, girl. I'm gonna go watch a video. Yes, 
Yes, me and my ex were supposed to go out this weekend, and we did not. So I'm just gonna leave it there. And I just not not I, I'm amazed, but not amazed as how my ex can like disappoint me that it don't even phase me no more y'all it's just i'm just sitting there going i'm unfazed about by, by dating in 2024 i am over it it's it, it's above me now i'm above it i'm above it i'm <laughs> just gonna look up he's very yeah it flaky is one word you want to call it i want to call it something else but yeah it didn't work out and we did not go out this weekend so tuesday i'm gonna go see dune with my, with my BFF slash sister-in-law in April, I got a K-pop concert to go to. I'm going out of town. Um, I'm going on vacation. Um, I'm going on vacation for spring break. And so I don't have time. I'm not going to let the lack of a relationship or a relationship or whatever dating or not dating. I'm not seeing nobody right now. I'm single, I'm solo dolo, and I'm going to get my shirt that says solo dolo on it. Because I'm not studying these men. I'm, I'm concentrating this year on trying to live my life. So I tell people out there, please concentrate on living your life. Do not have these people think that you got to buy someone's affection or someone's love. Or you have to do stunts and tricks. You got to pee pop. You got to back bend. You got to pussy pop. You, you, you got you to chest bump. Chest bump for them. No. Just go out and live your life. And I feel like if I meet somebody, I do. I don't. But I'm not going to jump through hoops and be a poodle, a show, show dog. Um, for someone's love and affection. I'm just not going to do it. I'm just not going to do it. Make sure y'all like and subscribe to the video. Y'all go back and re-watch re it. Hit the hit the thumbs up. There's like 10 people, 10, 11, 12 people in here now. Good morning, everybody. Salute. I thank all of you guys for being here. Make sure you subscribe. I'm close to 1,000 subscribers. I am so close. I can taste it. Once I get 1,000 subscribers, that means I get paid. Um, I'm going to put a, in this video, I'm going to put links to the article, to the video and the article about Mocha where you can watch the video for yourself. Listen to these women yourself. I'm going to put a, a link to my Kofi, coffee, coffee, think coffee, my coffee link where if you want to buy me a cup of coffee, um, yeah, I'm getting a lot of people now, I guess, because I post all the time. Because you know, for a while, like I told y'all, I appreciate everybody being patient with me. Because you know, there was for a long, a long time where I didn't post because you know my mom died, and so I just stopped doing the YouTube thing. I needed to take a break, a mental health break. Um, I didn't have it in me, but now I'm back. I feel like I'm back. I'm getting my rhythm, and I just feel like I'm back. And I like talking to you guys right now i'm gonna go walk it is 80 something degrees here in texas like the other day it was 45 now today it's 80 tomorrow's supposed to be 80 it's supposed to be 80 70 80 degrees all this week so i'm gonna go out here and and get my headphones on listen to my k-pop because i love k-pop you know y'all that's my favorite form of music and i'm finna go get my walk on and i'm supposed to, and i'm supposed to be working today and i gotta go we, we're supposed to be applying for our passports today so i'm just going to have a wonderful day y'all all have a wonderful day tiffany bobby gsp sir khan am i pronouncing that right sir khan I, I i hate when americans pronounce people's names all messed up sir i don't know sir khan or sir khan thank you for subscribing everybody else has been here make sure you thumbs up rewatch the video comment i don't know what's going on with women today but i am trying to save women one video at a time i'm trying to say women and men one video at a time if you're not seeing my other videos about romance scams go look at go look at that video that got a lot of views and um it's monday y'all it's monday so um i hope y'all have a good monday i'll be back probably tomorrow and i'm gonna do another ozempic video um because i'm gonna talk about uh the latest develops it developments in my ozempic not nothing shocking i'm just gonna do an update about some observations and some tools that I'm using along with my Ozempic journey. And, um, so I, I've had, I have lost a bunch of weight, like, believe it or not, y'all, like to the point where I'm starting to, like, I have to try to slow it down a little bit, but y'all have a good day, but we're going to talk about that in my Ozempic video that I'm going to do tomorrow. But like I said, make sure you thumbs up the video, like share, subscribe. And until next time, folks, peace out. Uh, 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 K-pop time. Uh.